it's finally gorgeous up here in Michigan, so we decided to go ahead and do our list outside today. We're gonna have a little bit of fun with this video. <laughs> now, granted, there's still gonna be some uh, good information you can glean from this. It'll help you correlate and better understanding of what it's like to prep. But we're gonna talk about Zombies. Zombies. And it's really funny. People always think when they watch the zombie movies that I'm going to be one of the survivors. Yeah. Of course, the whole thing focuses on that. But everybody thinks we're going to be a survivor when it's probably more than likely other people are going to be one of the zombies attacking the survivors. Pretty interesting. Yes. So I guess the question is, who are the survivors and who are the zombies? The preppers are the survivors. Yeah, we're the survivors. Because you have to understand that the, the zombies are the people who, they fell asleep at the wheel. They're doubters. Nothing's going to happen to us. Everything's going to go just fine. And when things do happen, they sit there in disbelief and suddenly, suddenly they get bit. Yep. You know, and I don't care if you're talking about TV shows or movies. In fact, um, I actually read a paper where it said that between troubled times, when there's troubled times, you're going to see more zombie movies. Okay. For example, in 1932, I think it was, was the first zombie movie called White Zombie. Of course, Great Depression. 1968, during Vietnam and everything, we have Night of the Living Dead. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Yeah, and then even better, in my opinion, 19, I think it was 77, around there somewhere, was Dawn of the Dead, where the mm -hmm. one who were in the shopping mall. I loved that, that movie. Good. That was great. Of course, that's during the time when there's like the oil crunch and all these things happening in the 70s. And of course, even in modern times, there's been World War Z, yep. and there's been uh, um, The Walking Dead. There's so many different shows and such that correlate with these, with these troubled times. So that's what this video is going to be all about, is looking at what, what do the survivors have to go through? What are some things we have to do to survive in zombie movies? And you'll be surprised. Watch through the whole video. You'll be surprised how, how many of these actually connect to real life and prepping. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go through these top 10 things that basically zombie movies can teach us. They want food. They want food. You're absolutely right. So I guess the question is, for zombies, what is zombie food? Us. Yeah, us. Zombies? Brains. <laughs> so I guess you could say, in reality, zombies want to go to you for food. Mm -hmm. I mean, you are their food. Let's have Ashley over for dinner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she is going to be the dinner. And that's what we're talking about in prepping. You want to make sure you keep your preps absolutely quiet. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? The zombies that are around now, the ones who are not prepping, are going to be coming to you for food. Yep. They may not want to be eating you or your brains, although I wouldn't put, put them past some of them. <laughs> but they're going to come to you for food. They want your food. Now picture that picture of thousands and thousands of zombies around you standing in the middle holding a can of corned beef hash. Mm -hmm. They're going to be coming to you for food. No more safety. You notice in these shows, they lose all their safety and security. Yeah, they don't have it anymore. No. I can't think of a single zombie movie where they stay at home and everything's just fine. Nope. Yeah, there's like shopping malls. I mean, isn't it kind of weird they want to go into a shopping mall? I think a grocery store would be a better bet. But you lose all your safety and security, and that's what's going to happen. And I think that's why people are so focused on having bug out bags. Mm -hmm. And I always stress, try to stay home. And there are techniques. I've seen in The in the Walking Dead, I haven't seen a lot of Walking Dead episodes, but I remember in some of them, they can actually try to do things to make it look like they're not in the house. Mm -hmm. So you can actually try to do the same thing, so you do have some safety and security, but you can't depend on it. You will be overrun. I say this laughingly, that I've had so many people say, well, I challenge all the zombies, all the people who aren't preppers to come out to the country because I've got a gun. And I even talked about this in a video before and a person was like, I'll shoot them all. Have you seen the zombie movies? Yeah. I mean, World War Z is like the best example. We're not talking about one or two or 10. They're talking lots and lots of zombies. Hundreds, if not thousands of zombies. And granted, you may have thousands of rounds of ammo. I don't think you can reload fast enough. I couldn't. And the thing is, we're not talking about zombies in real life. We're talking about these are people yeah. trying to overrun your house. And uh, I don't know, just even the thought of trying to shoot someone because you want to keep your, your can of corned beef hash. You want to give it up to them, give it up to them. But don't think that guns are going to save you in this situation. I'm not saying don't have a gun. In fact, I am saying you should have a gun and lots of ammo, multiple guns. Practice at it. Be proficient at it. But don't think that this may save you because out in the country... You know the people in the city, they know who has the food. Mm -hmm. They're coming to you for food, and they're going to overrun you yep. by hordes of these zombies. No power. The power gets shut off, there's no more electricity, and there's no more shopping, and they cannot get what they need at the stores. Now, I think in some zombie movies, they take advantage that everybody else is kind of dead, and they go in the store and get giant things of canned food, but these type of zombies are coming for us, you understand the, the stores are going to be the first one they're, mm -hmm. that's going to go. That's going to be the bloodbath. Yes. You know, they're going to go in there and take every single morsel of food and, and then some. 
And those and, zombies know how to open cans. And we've talked about this on the channel before. More than likely, we're going to see some species of animals go extinct, mm -hmm. like deer. Turkey. Because especially being out here, even though people have food and stuff, there's no more government. They're not going to stop them, and people are starting to get hungry. There's only so many deer and turkey and such. Rabbit and, and squirrels. squirrels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to go really fast. Those chipmunks. <laughs> yeah, so expect to lose the power. Expect to lose shopping. And the zombies are going to take everything they possibly can. No transportation. This is one thing that actually makes me kind of laugh a little bit, like in The Walking Dead, because supposedly it's weeks, if not months, if not years, and they're still driving around cars. Let's pretend you actually have good gasoline at this time. Batteries just don't last like they mm -hmm. used to. That's Car sure. batteries don't. And uh, I've actually heard somebody say they addressed this in The Walking Dead once. And I know at Walking Dead eventually started walking or doing horseback, but eventually cars are not going to be drivable anymore. No, not at all. I mean, it's getting to the point now where you can't even buy the stuff for them. Even the car parts are becoming... Extinct. Dif <laughs> yeah, difficult to get. Extinct. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so transportation, bicycles, yeah. horses, yeah. Amish... Yeah, but if people are hungry, they'll eat their horses. So. Absolutely. And the rider on it too, probably. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think transportation besides your own two feet is going to be, that's the only good thing you're going to be able to rely on at that time. No communication. With no communication, you're going to lose everything. You're going to lose all the contacts. How many of you guys can actually remember phone numbers anymore? <laughs> I know I can't. I can remember my one from a kid, but now forget it. I'm lost. And we're not going to have that. We're going to lose all that information. And no internet? Yes. No telephones? No cell phones? No YouTube. Oh, I can't wait to have no cell phone to carry that <laughs> dumb thing around anymore. And people will say, that's why I get on ham radios. And listen, I, I'll tell you right now, you should. I'm not licensed, but I plan on being soon. I guess you have to look at the zombie apocalypse, though, because if it's a government-orchestrated zombie mm -hmm. apocalypse, which I'm not discounting that, I need you need to understand that the government has the ability, and I'm not saying this, just guessing it, the government has the ability to block all... Mm -hmm. ham radio radio signals you understand that but we're talking about a total collapse society so go ahead and yeah. use ham radios with your buddies no government yeah so we're talking about no government structure mm. there is nobody coming to help you mm. that's the important that's thing scary. you need to know nobody is coming and i say this all the time it's no laughing matter but it took fema to get a week to the superdome mm -hmm. if there's a total collapse there's no government coming to help you out you are on your own or with a community you set up. And I always say this all the time, get a community, mm -hmm. get with your neighbors, talk with your neighbors, try to form groups, whatever you can. A lone ranger is not gonna survive in the zombie nope. apocalypse. I think Glenn from The Walking Dead, he was like a lone ranger. He could like run out, well, that's not most of us. We're, yeah. we're going to get caught and die. You need to have a group and you need to get together because besides that, nobody's gonna come help us when the collapse happens. Only a few friends. Now you probably only have a small group of friends that you trust, that you wanna be around. Kind of like an inner circle type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what I've noticed in zombie movies, you can never trust anybody in your mm -hmm. circle. People are always like betraying each other and stabbing each other in the back literally. Yeah. Or shooting each other. Yeah. There's always been like a camaraderie where they work together, but then there's always something that happens that causes a serious mistrust between the mm -hmm. group. So, I mean, get with people, but I guess don't trust them as much watch as you your can. Back. Yeah, watch your back and just don't trust. show them all your cards. Yeah. yeah, keep things close to your chest. Don't let down your guard. I was just a preteen when I saw Dawn of the Dead in the movies. And holy cow, it was like amazing, eye-opening, terrifying for me. I remember one of the opening scenes, a police officer goes into a hallway mm -hmm. and this old lady walks up to him and he's like, here, I'll take care of you. And she goes, ah, and just tears the flesh out of his shoulder. And I was like, oh, did you see that? You can't trust anybody. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is. when. It, when it comes to this, uh, you need to understand that you are in control of your house. You're in control of your bartering items, your guns and your ammo, your food. Your stockpile. Your stockpile, everything. You're in charge of this. But I think it's a good lesson that once you let your guard down and say, oh, come on, old lady, come on in and I'll give you some corned beef hash, they'll bite you in the butt every time. Because once you let your stash open, they yeah. may say, oh my gosh, look, I mean, this is human nature now, it is. isn't it? Because people will say, oh, you know what, I'll help you out with this. And once you give somebody a hand to help them out, they take advantage of you. That's sad. It is very sad. And so what's it going to be like when it's life or death? Oh, it's going to be so worse. Yeah, so, I mean, if you do have to give somebody some food, a can of corned beef hash, we'll just use that as an example all, all night tonight. Just say, listen, this is my last can. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else. I just ate, 
I just had my own corned beef hash. I'm going to give it to you and your family. I wish I had something else to give you. I don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. So if you guys come across food, come back to me. Don't let your guard down to the nice people. I, I want to too. And I'm sure there'll be circumstances where you'll still do it. And so will we, but I think we're asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. You will be, you're basically opening yourself up to be vulnerable Very in that vulnerable. situation. And you're asking to be attacked. Yep. Welcome to the new world. Guess what? If you survived, you inherit the new world. Yeah. The very few zombie movies have it with a happy ending mm -hmm. where people get to survive. I think 28 days later, at the end of the first movie, the people were all happy living out and all the zombies were dying off. And guess what? Now they have a limited population on the planet. Does that sound kind mm -hmm. of familiar? Limited population on the planet. I survived through and now I don't have to worry about anything at all. Or do you? Mm. Yeah, let's not even get into talk about population control and trusting the government and all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going there. We're going to use this as a lesson to understand that if you survive this, yep. then there is hope. There's hope for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's the best thing you can go for. All right, so anyway, I know it's a fun subject. It's kind of silly to talk about. I love zombie movies. Maybe watch them and use it some, some of your uh, bugging out tactics by watching how they do it and go from there. And, uh, and in the meantime, go ahead and check out our next video and stay with us and thank you for following along.